listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah, and I am delighted to have you joining me today. Having talked about authentic working in interviews on this podcast before, for example, the conversation I had with Will Moyer a few weeks ago about living and working abroad, I thought it would be helpful to use an episode to illustrate exactly why the kind of work we do and how in line it is with our desires and values greatly impacts our happiness. I want to talk about this because authenticity is holistic. It affects all areas of our life. That means if one area of our life is out of balance, then our lives as a whole will be out of balance. That one area that's out of balance will throw the other areas out of balance in some way too. With that in mind, from now on, I'm dedicating each weekly podcast to a different aspect of authentic living. For example, authentic emotions, authentic working, authentic lifestyle, and authentic relationships. And this week, we're going to start with authentic working. I want to begin by asking one question, which is something that we hear a lot when we're children and at some point sort of fizzles out. And that question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like I said, at a certain point in our lives, people stop asking us this question and we stop asking it of our peers as well. Or at least the message behind this question, the idea of potentiality and ambition behind it shifts. Instead of thinking, what do we want to be when we grow up, it transforms into thoughts like, in an ideal world, I would dot, 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 or if money wasn't an issue, I would be doing X, Y, Z. If only I didn't have this house slash mortgage slash kids, car, debt, and so on, I would be doing my dream life as a diving instructor in the Bahamas. What happens is that the answer to this question, what do you want to be when you grow up, it stops being a goal and it starts becoming wishful thinking. Why is this important? This is really important because we spend so much of our time at work. Most of us spend more of our lives in pursuit of earning money than we spend with our friends and loved ones or doing activities that fulfill and satisfy our needs. Yet we rarely question the illogical nature of spending so much time doing something that most of us don't even like because it's just what people do. You leave school, you get a degree, you get a job, you settle down, etc., and that is life. But I wonder how many of us actually want to do these things. As we grow up, we get a lot of messages, either directly or through background noise, about what we should be doing with our lives. This includes things like whether we should go to university and get a degree, and as a subset of that, what subjects we should study, what kind of job someone with our skills and abilities should have, and what a, quote, proper job means. That's all well and good, but it rarely fits directly with what we'd ideally want to do with our lives. If we've gone through our lives up till now with a lot of people telling us what we should be doing and what we should want, that really raises the question, but what if I don't know what I want? What if I've internalized all these ideas that have been thrown at me to the point where I just don't know what I want anymore? If you're someone that's facing that question, I would ask you to flip it because I bet you have a few ideas about what you don't want. Knowing what we don't want is just as important as knowing what we do. Even if we can list off several careers or working situations that we definitely don't want to experience, we're still one step closer to finding out what makes us flow than we are if we just don't think about it. The truth is that we all have a limited amount of time on this planet. Every day that we spend doing something we don't feel passionate about is one day less we spend doing something that lights our fire. That is why it's so important to take the time and take the energy, no matter how hard or uncomfortable it feels, to really think about what we're doing with our work, what we're doing with our skills, what we're doing with our passion, what we're doing with our potential. There's a whole world out there, and the idea of exploring it can take us to a very, very uncomfortable place, We feel this discomfort when we're doing something that pushes us outside our comfort zone or that goes against what we believe we should do, but that doesn't mean it's wrong or that we should stop doing it. 
despite what we might hear from other people along the way, there is nothing morally wrong with pursuing our dreams. It's not a waste of time. It's not throwing away a good education. It's not irresponsible. It's not reckless. When we bring authenticity to our work life, we realize that possibilities are endless. We don't have to sit in an office. We don't have to work for someone else. We can do these things if that's what our heart really desires, but there is no must or should involved. No one else is responsible for us not doing work we love and feel passionate about. No one else is making us stay in this situation. We have complete control over what we do with our lives. And the power to do meaningful, joyful and fulfilling work is totally within our hands. When it comes down to it, we are only limited by the box we put around ourselves. I hope some of those ideas about why the kind of work we're doing is so important are helpful to hear. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, feedback, thoughts, or anything else that you want to chat to me about, feel free to email me at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life. Thank you.